now we want to approach the problem of uh, pH sensitive reaction and uh, selected from literature the acylation of the 4 amino benzylamine and literature tells that when you add an equivalent of uh, acetic anhydride, depending on the pH of your reaction solution, you will get either a predominantly acylation of the benzylamine nitrogen, when you work with alkaline pHs, so around 11, and you get predominantly the aniline being acylated when you work at pHs around 4. And what we would like to do is we want to get uh, the necessary understanding why that's true and we want to even generate a Dynochem model which can predict exactly these uh, findings. So first, the key of understanding is the interaction of different acid-base systems it's because the different amine functions and we also generate acid from the uh, starting material, acetic anhydride. So all these are uh, acids and bases so uh, and we need also to understand that the anilines are weaker bases than aliphatic amines so other way around the protonated anilines are stronger acids and thus have lower pKa's than the protonated benzylamines so and from literature now we get the numerical data so in order to release this proton from the aniline that equilibrium here has a pKa of 3.7 and for releasing the benzylamine proton that equilibrium has a pKa of 9.7 so we have about nine, uh, 6 uh, pKa units difference in the in the acid base equilibrium constants and uh, you may also ask for a species where you have uh, the aniline protonated and the benzylamine is not protonated but that is only a theoretical species because you can easily see from the difference in the pKa's that once you generate this species it will be in equilibrium with this species and that equilibrium is far on the right hand side so you can calculate from the differences of the pKa's that that equilibrium number is, is this so we can ignore this compound we can cross it out so what remains is the species where we have either the uh, both nitrogens protonated, we have a species where just the uh, the benzyl amine is protonated and the aniline nitrogen has three electron pairs, and we have the species where both nitrogens have three electron pairs. And with the three electron pairs, that is important because we can assume that only the free nitrogen with the free electron pairs can attack the uh, carbonyl of the acetic anhydride to form the product and as soon as the nitrogen is protonated no reaction can occur at that site so what's important is we need to understand the composition <coughs> of the distribution the distribution of these species as a function of pH and uh, this is something very important in general. So if you have more complex systems, for example, uh, heterocycles with uh, three nitrogens, amino groups, uh, OA, uh, phenols, OH groups, alcohol groups, then probably you can easily account four or five pKa values to a single uh, molecule. And by the method I will show you, it is easy to now account to calculate the distribution of all the different various protonated and deprotonated species and in order to do so we will make use of the fact that the acid base equilibrium reactions are really really fast so when we start with a system where we know that everything what can be protonated is protonated so in a very acidic part maybe pH 0 and then we add base till we get a solution where we have an excess of hydroxide maybe one more excess of hydroxide so that the pH is 14 then by slowly adding this we can go from pH 0 to 14 
and simultaneously because of the the, the fast uh, reaction we get the equilibrium concentrations of all these species as a function of the pH in one go. And that I will show you. So the next model components distribution. So you see I have used uh, a quite straightforward nomenclature. So BA here means benzylamine and A is the aniline. So a BAA is a species where both the aniline and the benzylamine are not protonated, so free base. This species accordingly is a species where the benzylamine is protonated but the aniline is not and this species is the fully protonated benzylamine, benzylammonium anilinium and H plus water. The process is, uh, make it smaller, hope you can see it clearly. So nothing special, we have uh, a semi batch reaction where we charge hydrogen, uh, hydroxide and as the reactions we have just the three pKa uh, or the acid equilibriums which are required. So the two from the benzylamine aniline system as defined in the previous slide I showed you and not to forget the water dissociation. As I mentioned when we come to a pH around 7 then that is the dominating source of protons. Okay and then we have the scenarios here and you see we start with a liter, one mole of benzylamine aniline, so the starting material. I, caught, I added the, the, the water, it's a rough calculation because I don't know the exact uh, densities and, and distributions, but it uh, doesn't matter. What the point in this is, it's a little tricky, is I added just three moles of H plus just to get it to a very low pH. Uh, this model is not charge neutral but for this purpose that doesn't matter. And I also added now four equivalents of hydroxide and uh, so to get the pH to 14. So we run this reaction. So, okay. So I will first probably uh, close the other models here. That's too much at the moment. So you see this and what I will do is because we want to use these values I run this reaction with a quite good screen resolution or the data point resolution not 50 points maybe 500. Okay and then we run this and what you see here are the species here. You see straight lines interestingly so this is the uh, the compound where everything is protonated so you see and then we increase the base and the protonation will uh, <coughs> it will be uh, it will it's gone it will get to the hydroxide that is the species where only the uh, benzylamine is protonated but the aniline is already free base and then at the end you see that is the uh, the full free base where both nitrogens are uh, in in the free base state and uh, if you look now for the pH curve, that looks a little funny because that is now, it's actually, it's a titration curve. And you know that Dynochem now as a function of, uh, you can get all these numerical data in the table view. So if I press table, you will see that all the data from the very, very low value here till to the end are now tabulated. And by pressing copy to Excel, what happens is Dynochem, I show you, I have to do it here again. I show you then a new tab will be created where all these uh, results are, are given. And uh, so you see there are sorted here as usually in Dynochem with the time as the x axis. But if you make another graph, maybe in another graphic package, and you use the pH as the x-axis, then you will get exactly what we want. And I show you the resulting curve in, I'll go back to the PowerPoint here. Okay, these are the tricks I have. 
So making the pH data the x-axis, we get the following distribution curve. Now you see where the species are. You see at the right hand side where the alkaline region, high pH, both concentrate or nitrogens are able to get product. So both nitrogens can attack the acetic anhydride. It's only a matter of the competing reactivity. And we can assume that the reactivity goes along with the nucleophilicity. And we can we can probably say that the benzylamine, in this case, because of the higher base, the ZCC, it is also the higher nucleophilicity. So that rate constant of the benzylamine will be larger than the rate constant of the aniline nitrogen to attack the acetic anhydride. This species, of course, though, see, around pH 6 to 7, that species goes to really, really zero. And now, at that point, pH 7 below, the dominating species is a species where the benzylamine is protonated, so can no longer uh, undergo acidation reaction. But the, free, the aniline is still free base. So in this region, only this blue species can go uh, with the reaction. And if you constantly go down with the pH, then you will see you come to a pH where actually no reaction anymore can happen. So that is the, the, the knowledge what we need.